Hi, this is Professor Fernandez, and this is video 2.3, video 3 of lesson 2. Uh, we're going to be talking about the applications of linear functions, and the example that we're going to we're gonna be doing comes from Calculus Simplified. This is uh, example B.5 in Appendix B, example 5. I'm going to zoom in a little bit here and make it easier for us to read it. Um, let's see what it says. Suppose you're traveling from Europe to the United States. Temperature in Europe is measured in Celsius, so we're denoting that by C. Um, the conversion back to Fahrenheit, denoting that by F, is given by the linear function, this. Okay, so we are to identify the y-intercept and the slope, and then we want to graph this function. And then later we want to identify, uh, sorry, interpret the y-intercept and the slope. So notice what I'm doing here that's a little different from what I've done in the previous videos. Uh, up to now in this series of videos for the course. Uh, I'm trying to be very careful to underline, circle, you know, use squigglies, whatever is, is uh, the best way to do it, to um, highlight the relevant information that is given to me. This is an especially useful technique or strategy to do when you're doing word problems or applied problems like this one is, because there's information that's relevant and there's information that's not as relevant. For example, here, it doesn't really matter that we're traveling to Europe from the United States. You know, We could be traveling to Europe from some other place. You know, What really matters here is that we're given a linear function, and we want to do all of this stuff over here. So you know, the prompt, if you will, is meant to tie this, uh, you know, these mathematical questions to some real world problem. But really, the information we want to pick out here is all in here. OK, so we're going to start answering these questions in a minute. Um, let's take them step by step. So the first question is about identify. So we just want to pick out the y-intercept and the slope. And then later we want to graph the function. So there's three things to do here. So I'll just number them. Okay. So let's think about the y-intercept. So remember the y-intercept is the y-value on the graph when x is 0. Okay. So in this case, c is like our x. It's our independent variable f is like our y, it's our dependent variable. So you can think of this equation as y equals 9 over 5x plus 32. You know, so I'm, I'm changing variables here just to make it look more like something you've already, uh, you've already worked a lot with in this series. We've done a lot with y equals mx plus b and certainly in the reading. Um, so going back to the definition of the y-intercept, if x is 0, right, then 9 fifths times 0 is 0, then y would be 32. So that gives us our answer for the y-intercept. The y-intercept is the point 0, 32. Again, that means when C, in this case, that's kind of like our x, when the temperature in Celsius is 0 degrees, then the temperature in Fahrenheit is 32 degrees. So that's what we consider freezing here out in the US. So now let's look at the second question that we're asked for. What is the slope? Well, so I kind of let me unerase what I did there. <laughs> because by writing this in the y equals mx plus b form, hopefully that um, rings a bell as to what the slope is. Uh, remember in the y equals mx plus b form that we typically work with in linear functions, the m is the slope. So if I compare here, and the m is the, the coefficient of x. So if I compare these two here, I see that m is 9 over 5. So that is our slope. So m equals 9 over 5. Um, it might be useful later, and you know we will use this in Part B, to just work this out to a decimal, so this ends up being 1.8. Okay, and then number three, graph the function. All right, so now we are going to graph this linear function over here, um, and let's set up a set of axes. So I'm going to rewrite the function here, 9 fifths x plus 32. Um, and, you know, I'm working with y and x to try to connect it to some, uh, you know, letters you already know and are familiar with. But remember, x is like C here, and y is like F, Fahrenheit and Celsius. So we found the y value to be 0, 32. So we start there, put a point. So again, that tells us that when the temperature in Celsius is 0, the temperature in degrees Fahrenheit, in Fahrenheit is 32 degrees. Uh, and then we now move in the direction of the slope. Here's where we said, you know, any one of these really works, but, you know, I'm going to do both of them uh, and then illustrate how one might be more preferable than the other. So let's think of the slope as written, 9 fifths. 
Remember that the slope is the change in the y value over the change in the x value, right? So in this case, the slope is 9 fifths. So what does that tell me? That tells me that if I move 5 units to the right in the x direction, then I have to move 9 units up in the y direction, OK? So if I were to go to a Celsius temperature of 5, you know, 5 units to the right of 0, then I would have to go up by 9 units from 32. So 32 plus 9 is 41. And I would put a point there. And then, you know, the graph of a linear function is a line. So I would just take this, these two points, and I would connect them with a line. Okay. One last thing to point out here, how do I know that this line goes on forever, right? So, and that's kind of a question of the domain, uh, about the domain and the range of the linear function. If you're not given any information, in the real world problem or in the context, this is where it does help to remember what these variables are, right? Then you can just assume that, you know, the domain and the range are what they are based on the math that you just found out. For a linear function, you know, I can plug in whatever x value I want and, and it'll always generate whatever y value I want, unless it's a special case where it's a vertical line or a horizontal line. Um, in this case, C and F do have some real world context, they're temperatures. Um, and as we can see from, you know, uh, our graph, and as you probably have experienced um, throughout your life, uh, temperatures can be positive, can be negative. Um, there is something called absolute zero. So for any of you science students out there, there are ways to figure out that there is a, an end to this line. So, you know, if, if you're a science student out there, I'm going to um, get rid of this little ending of the line. So I'll just draw it like this. Uh, there is an absolute zero temperature. As far as we know, nothing can get uh, colder than that temperature. So, you know, I don't want to get too technical into the science. So um, I would just ask you to um, stick with the math here. Um, so we've plotted this function to our degree of uh, uh, rigor. Uh, and the next thing I want to do is look at how things would have changed if I would have done the same process but used 1.8 instead. So let me just draw that graph. It's going to look very similar, but the scale is going to be a little different. So I'm still going to start at the y-intercept of 32. But rather than now going to the right by 5 units, which I got from here, I'm now expressing the slope as 1.8, right, decimal form. Um, 1.8 does have a denominator. The denominator is 1. So instead of going to the right by 5, I'm going to go to the right by 1. And then the y-value would go up by 1.8. This is a little squiggly, not a 3. So I would add 1.8 to 32 to get me to 33.8. Okay, and then I would put a dot there. And I would draw the graph of my function, uh, of my line. You can see that, you know, I'm trying to keep them parallel because the, the, the two graphs that I've drawn, because they really, they are the same slope. Um, the scale is different. So in a third graph, and I'm going to show you now, I had put in here the actual graph from the book. So here is the graph. This is yet another graph, a third graph, where the scale is also different. Because notice that the line markers here are by 20s, right? So this is 20, this is 20, uh, and then this is 60, okay? But either way you draw the graph, right? Um, whether you look at the slope as 9 fifths, whether you look at the slope in decimal form as 1.8, um, or whether you go over here and you do something a little different. Here, instead of using the slope of 9 fifths, where we went to the right by 5, and then we went up by 9, we went to the right by 20. So what would happen there? Well, you would have to multiply this slope by 4 over 4. So you're going to the right by 20, and then you would go up by 36. Okay? So if I wanted to replicate this graph, it would be like starting at 0, 32, going to the right by 20, and then adding 36 to 32. Right, so that would give me a 68, and I'll put a dot there. Okay, you can notice that that's what's happening. Notice this uh, crossing here when c equals 20, right, crosses at a little bit above 60. So that's the 68 that we just calculated from up here. Okay, so that's a lot of information, right? Uh, any one of these three graphs would have sufficed, but I really wanted to give you sort of the full story, even with a short discussion of absolute zero for this part A, so we have done that. Um, and now let's talk about part B. So interpret the y-intercept and the slope. This is a different question. 
um, we are asked here to give some interpretation, some sense. If you were talking to somebody who's not a mathematician or who is not in math class, you would want to give them some information about what 9 fifths means and what 32 means that wouldn't involve terms like slope and y-intercept like we did for part A. All right, so how would we do this? Um, let's interpret the y-intercept first, right? So the y-intercept is 0, 32, right? If you told somebody, hey, the y-intercept of this function is 0, 32, they would say, I have no idea what that means. However, if you told them that when the temperature measured in Celsius is 0 degrees, then the temperature measured in Fahrenheit is 30 degrees, that would make much more sense, right? Said another way, a 0 degrees Celsius temperature converts to a 32 degrees Fahrenheit temperature. That makes a lot of sense, and it's really useful, especially, again, if you're traveling between countries that use these temperature systems. OK, so we've interpreted the y-intercept. Um, let's interpret the slope. To do that, I'm going to go back to what I had written over here. Um, you know, we have two forms of the slope that we've been using here. Um, let me just use the decimal form here to make things a little clearer. So we wrote, <clears throat> excuse me, that the slope, which is the change in y over the change in x, is 1.8. Now, remember again that here the y values are the Fahrenheit values, and the x values are the Celsius values. Okay, so that's 1.8. Great, so I'm going to look at this side of the equation, and I'm going to multiply by delta c. So I get 1.8 times delta c. So this is the equation that's really going to provide me with a variety of ways to interpret the slope. Okay, because what does it say? In the simplest case, it says, suppose, pretend, that delta C equals 1. Then, well, if I look at where delta C is, if I substitute 1, I multiply it by 1.8, and I would get 1.8. So we conclude that delta F equals 1.8. All right, and you know, how come I used one? Could I have used 10, 15? <clears throat> There's lots of other numbers, yes, I could have used. But here's why I used one. Because now from this mathematical statement, I can make a very real world sensible statement. I can say, suppose the change in the Celsius temperature is one degree. Then the change in the Fahrenheit temperature is 1.8 degrees. See, isn't that nice? We're not talking anymore about slopes. We're not talking about any sort of mathematical quantities. We're just talking about how if a certain temperature changes uh, by a degree in Celsius, then it converts to a 1.8 degree change of temperature as measured in Fahrenheit. And you can see now that there's nothing special here. Um, if somebody said, well, what if the temperature goes up by 10 degrees Celsius? OK, well, all right, then delta C is 10. We would go back here. And we would multiply 1.8 by 10, and we would get 18. So we'd say, oh, all right, I know what's going to happen. If the temperature goes up by 10 degrees Celsius, then as measured in Fahrenheit, it'll go up by 18 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay? So that's a really nice way to interpret the slope. If I had to condense that interpretation down into one sentence, I would say that a 1 degree increase in Celsius temperature results in a 1.8 degree increase in Fahrenheit temperature. Okay, This is something known as a rate of change, right? So this is how fast the Fahrenheit temperature is increasing for every unit increase in the Celsius temperature. And the last thing I'll leave you with is sort of a teaser for what's going to happen later in this course. Um, notice the equation already told us it over here. Um, this is a constant rate of change. This number, 1.8, never changes. That's part of the reason why this is a linear function. Later on in the course, when we get to derivatives, we will talk about what happens if this number changes. How do we then talk about interpretations like this? And that's going to get us to the notion of the slope of a curve, and that's going to be connected with the idea of a derivative. Okay, so I'll see you in the next video.